program, gave you Teflon and a few other things. Who knows what uh, will come out of this? <coughs> but I can say today, who are the people who are you know banging the loudest drum for Exascale? Well, it turns out there are two United States agencies. One is the Office of Science, which is part of the Department of Energy, and the other is the National Nuclear Security Administration. These are the people in charge of all our nuclear weapons. And they're <coughs> pushing it. Um, they actually feel that we needed to do basic research, but earth science, climate science, material science solve energy issues, <coughs> and you know, somewhere they slip in national security. What that means is, with power like that, they, they can crack any encrypted code you throw at them. And that's what we, I didn't see the NSA up there, but it should have said the NSA, right? Well, uh, yeah, it sort of slipped in. Yeah, I mean agencies. I, I could have encrypted that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we're talking serious money. It's not like they're saying, here's a billion dollars, build me the machine. They're actually putting out small amounts uh, out there. So in 2012, they actually awarded 126 to do basic <coughs> research. And that's what I'll talk about. And we're not the only people. Turns out that folks in Europe, Japan, and even folks from China and India are plunking down some money and trying to come up with their own exa scale machine. Uh, three European projects, I actually have met uh, this one and this one I talked about previously. They've actually uh, built some hardware to test some concepts. So they are trying to make projects. They want to be at the front. Mm -hmm. the, their view is, why should the United States be at the forefront of everything? We can do it too. So I think that's good. I think that's healthy competition. <coughs> so just like, you know, Sputnik or the Race to the Moon, whatever, these sort of things actually gets folks energized and then they start building stuff. Uh, two years ago when I gave the original talk, at that time, and it still holds true, if we had to build an exascale machine with technologies in 2014, we need about 100 megawatts of power just for a single exa scale wow. computer. They made some progress. In Japan, they actually say that maybe around 2020, we can build maybe an exa scale that actually uses 30 megawatts. So they've come down from 100 to a 30, primarily because of things like you know the ARM chip. They said, all right, let's use that. So you're cutting off 90 watts per socket. And there's literally <laughs> hundreds of thousands of sockets, so that makes a difference here. I can't really visualize what 30 megawatts is. I mean, what would you compare that with? Is there uh, a uh, large scale nuclear <laughs> power plant? Really? Yes. Uh, anyone here from the energy industry or Detroit Edison or no people in consumer energy? Your typical, uh, you know, <coughs> small size power plants, they're anywhere from three to five to 10 megawatts, that's their size. Really? Yeah. Uh, older ones, coal fired. Is this thing was consumed 30? Just for a single machine. <coughs> wow. But they, 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 they needed to do some serious calculations because there's no other way for them to sure. figure out uh, the solution to the problem. So, so I think the, the so yes. just to help with that, so the solar panels that you put on a roof of a house, yeah, yeah. that's about three kilowatts. Yeah, right. So you need like a, what is it, a thousand houses? Maybe more. 30,000. 30,000? 30, 30, 30, yeah, that's a lot. Wow. Yeah. Of course, you know, I have to slip in a joke here. Uh, huh. I don't know how long it'll take for the OS to reboot. <laughs> Um, and then, very recently, what, a little over six months ago, uh, the White House signed a National Strategic Computing Initiative when they realized that the Chinese, the Japanese, the Europeans, they're actually, at that point in time last year, they were a little ahead of us here. So they said, all right, let's do something. I'm going to say more about this. Um, so hold that thought. Well, there are lots of folks out there with lots of big, powerful machines, and we actually have a list that's been around for 25 years. We call it the Top 500 list. You can look at top500.org, and you'll find these charts. What's been happening in the last few years that we're afraid of, if you look at this graph, 
it turns out that every year we uh, build bigger, faster machines. This is in that list of 500. This is the bottom 500 machines. This is the top number one machine. And it's been having a nice linear progress out here. But somewhere around 2012, notice this is going straight, but this is starting to drop. Which is trying to say, in another word, that our current technologies are not getting any better. As a matter of fact, this is, uh, I thought of including in the slide, but last week, the CEO of Intel actually said, clock speeds aren't going to get any better. They might get more energy efficient, but we're not going to see clock speed increases like we've seen for the past 25 years. We've kind of known about it because we've been watching these trends. So around 2012, it started dropping and then secondly dropping further because the top machine out there for the last two years has been stuck at 33 petaflops. And now everyone is getting serious, including our NSA and Department of Energy and, and NSA. And they're giving money out to folks, which we'll talk about in the next few slides, and then we're going to uh, wrap up, uh, to develop, do basic research, and come up with radical technologies that will help us, once again, either get back on this straight slope or even jump ahead. And so it's really exciting times ahead here. If you go to that same website, this will actually show you your classical uh, computer stuff. And this shaded area shows where you're having now more accelerators. Uh, so the accelerators has been, you know, climbing in here early. It was very small. Chip technology has changed. Architectures have changed. Uh, and if you look at this, this one yellow is the academic side. Uh, Industry has always been a big player. And then research is different from academic. Uh, that's where they're trying new architectures, and so they keep investing as well. So the top 500 is uh, a very prestigious list to be at, and hopefully if uh, in the next few weeks when we decide our next thing, we'll actually get back on that list. We were there maybe 10 years ago and that dropped off, and now we want to get back again. But it's important to notice that, um, you know, Everyone is excited about exascale, and they're doing lots of fundamental research. We do know that it's kind of hard. Originally, they predicted it will happen in 2018. That was a prediction made, by the way, in 2011 or so. But now, when we're closer, we realize it's much more harder. And this graph illustrates the same thing, where it, on the vertical axis is the compute power. We've been lucky we've had linear, but it's been dropping like the previous slide. But that was just on which is the top biggest machine. This is just straight on compute. So that's your exaflop out there. And as you can see, they're thinking 2020, but it might be a little later. Who knows? So I'd ask you to hold the thought in July of last year, Obama signed the NSCI. And that's actually the press release. And so if you go to that URL, I've included it somewhere. Click on this, you'll actually see what are the areas that they want to concentrate on. These are those five areas. And folks in our business and in the open source business, they're <coughs> jumping into all of these, create systems that can actually you know, get towards an exaflop to process exabytes of data all at once. Yeah. Very, very ambitious. Uh, improve the developer productivity. This is clearly software. We can't do the old classical way of developing software. We have to now have a very different mindset where the developer thinks in terms of thousands of processes going on simultaneously. How do you describe that? You can't use old classical software. We have to come out with a new way. Another thing uh, that they want to do is train more people, and uh, that's making it more readily available. And this is what I'll talk about in the next four or five slides, and then we can wrap up. But all of these folks, the NASA folks, FBI, NSA, National Institute of Health, all of them, they've actually signed up to be one of the first people to use this kind of exascale or exaflop system. And so um, a little bit more about that. This is part of the NSCI. They actually physically stated that today's top machine actually sitting in China. We're way 
Our top machine is at about 17 petaflops. That's at a lab called Oak Ridge National Lab in Tennessee. Uh, so we're like kind of behind them. With this, they want to catch up and uh, you know start delivering something. In the interim, they've actually put out a bid, which has been won by Intel, for $200 million to produce a machine that does 180 petaflops in 2018. Not too far away. This will actually be, let me show you a picture of that. Well, it's there in a couple of slides. They're going to actually put it at Argonne National Lab, which is uh, in Lamont, just southwest uh, of Chicago. So they're preparing the site to put it up there. And then figure out how to make it work, how to get it towards that speed. Try out the new software, which is going to look very different than what we used to before. It's significantly faster than China computer. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They're serious about this. There's yeah. uh, serious money being yeah. poured into this because it turns out those who actually have access to these kind of resources, there's tremendous economic positive impact. Plus, you can do things that you could not do earlier and actually gain an edge in. So it's okay. Let me quickly talk about what the Europeans are doing. They have about three projects. They're focusing uh, on uh, three things. ESSI is a strategic software initiative. These are all the European companies. You may not recognize most of them, but uh, this might uh, you say numerical algorithms group. They supply libraries. Uh, there used to be a competition for IMSL, now they've gone well past that. But most of these are European companies out there <coughs> that are building them or have the expertise. Um, you don't have to read this, but they do things a little differently. The Europeans are, I don't know, sometimes it seems to me that they're like organized in massive committees. Yeah. And in order to get funding, they have to put the word European in front of any technical thing, and then they'll get funding. Let me show you what their roadmap looks like. This is what it looks like. Now you understand. So they have actually a, a, a working group, uh, WG, and then they produce a, a program, a working program three, four, five. They kick it off, they have a working group, they produce a report, they get funded, they do things. And they try to involve everyone in Europe to do this. However, I have to admit, they seem to have, uh, they're making progress. Interestingly enough, they're making progress. You know, this is not the Europe of 1945 or something. They've actually changed a little bit here. They've changed, they've actually learned to work with each other. But the most cute part is, they're French there, they're Spanish, lots of German, few Italian. But they all speak English. <coughs> Everyone, <coughs> everything. <coughs> the website's in English. You have to click uh, if you want a different language. The default is there. All their working report paper, everything's in English. So I said, okay, that's interesting. So they've got about seven phases. They're at phase three right now. But they are pretty serious, and they do arrive at consensus, and they do actually produce results. The other, this part, I've actually talked to these people and seen their gear. They, they're actually building hardware. And they're taking a little different tack. The last uh, four or five slides are how the US is doing it. Our business model is a little different, but I think it's very effective. Um, they actually have produced a machine, and uh, this is the hardware architecture. And they call it DEEP. I forget uh, what it stands for. Maybe. Uh, um, yeah, I forgot to put, it, it stands for Dynamic Execution Engine, something like that. What they're doing is they're saying, look, not all programs are the same. There are parts of a program that uh, run very well and very fast and they're parallel. There's some that are kind of like, <coughs> they can't speed them up. So why don't we build a machine that looks at the program and says, oh, this I can run in parallel, grab it, put it on the deeper engine, and the rest put it on maybe a slower part, let them run separately. So they're doing things a little different. This is what their actual hardware looks like. Uh, they build a special machine and special stuff so that they could, with software, analyze it, rip it apart, and put the faster stuff on, uh, real expensive and the slower another, run it that way. I don't know if they'll succeed or not, 
But certainly, I've not seen anyone else try something like that. So back to the US, that's enough about Europe. So uh, uh, all the labs got together, Oak Ridge, Argonne, and they came up with this initiative, Coral. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're the ones that said, all right, let's put a machine at Argonne, 180 <coughs> petaflop. Um, that is actually uh, going to be called Aurora. That's the name of the project. So it's going to have 180 petaflops. If you want to compare it to what older or current machines are, the Oak Ridge one, peak is 27, and actually achieves only 17 here. Theoretically, 27. But uh, they've announced two uh, projects. One is completed, the other is now. One is called the Design Forward, one is called Fast Forward, in which what they did is said, here's some money. Industry, academia, research institutes, we don't care if you like team up, put forward a proposal how you're going to build this exaflop, exascale machine. If we like your idea, we'll give you some money and you go take two years and develop a prototype, whatever, come back, tell us what you learned, what didn't work, and then we'll fund you further. So every two years they're going to review it. And they made it a competition. So that's what I'll talk about. But before I go, this is what the Aurora system, the 180 petaflop would look like. And this is not your classical single rack. These are special. They're probably like eight racks in one rack that they'll compress and put, and then you have more than 100 of these. Mm -hmm. And at the top, this particular thing, these are special <coughs> modules that do internal cooling for all of these. And they'll all be <coughs> probably uh, Freon or some refrigerant base that will suck out the heat right away. So that's what that will look like there. So um, there are people uh, in the Department of Energy US government. They came out with a fast forward that was a few years ago. And they said, we want you to look at the problems, energy, technology, software, in order to build this machine. Um, but the whole idea is that we, we need to look at fundamental technologies that 10 years later we can do. And out of all the competition, these were the five winners. They gave them some money. I'll quickly show you what they look like. So this one was from uh, AMD. And they came out with uh, non-volatile memory. This is back 2011. Stacked chips. These are now actually uh, been announced. And they're actually going to be building, selling them. So they came out with a memory architecture that you have to focus on the memory. Let somebody else focus on the CPU. So that uh, it's still in progress. It will conclude. But we're already seeing the results of this, which is exactly what the government wanted. Let's have competition. Come up with your best ideas. Here's some money. If you don't succeed, fine. At least we know it didn't work. We don't have to pour $100 million. For two to three to 10 million is enough. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, you had asked the question. This is their architecture where they completely redesigned everything and uh, they have a special network. I think it's called Dragonfly Network of high-speed internet <coughs> in order to, this entire system can actually deliver an exaflop scale machine. So right. they've got this design and they have to uh, build a tiny prototype and they use a whole bunch of uh, interesting technologies. Right now it's proprietary. These were the people who ran it. Bill Davies, their chief technical officer. And they looked at a lot of things, uh, signaling, how to deliver power, how to use organized memory, and things like that, so that they could make everything run much faster. So that was one uh, of the winning bids, and they're actually building it. Cray, which is the folks who invented supercomputing, they won a, um, in collaboration with one of the national labs and their people, they decided to look at uh, you know complete core architectures, instruction set, and invest time in compilers to make compilers more smart. Because if you're going to have a different architecture, you can't use the old compiler. It's got to know what the architecture looks like, take instructions and rearrange them so that they're matched up. And this is one thing that I wanted to tell you. For the first time, I've actually seen Hardware designers and software designers are sitting on the same table mm -hmm. designing the next architecture. 
You know what we've done for the past 50 years? <laughs> the hardware guy designs it, tosses it over the wall, software, now you produce something that you can run it on. It works on it. Yeah. It just bitches about what the hardware guy did. E exactly. <laughs> they forced them to sit together in 2011. They said, no, both of you sit together. Well, why do you need this instruction? What does it do? Well, it does this. Why, why do you do that? Because your hardware can't do it. Well, I can design a circuit that will do it. So there's more mapping, more synthesis. Sure. So that's not just the competition, different technologies. They also mandated that you guys sit together and figure it out. And they have to do this because there's so many millions of components. Mathematically, something will be breaking all the time. What are you going to do? Restart your program? They're actually building in reliability and robustness so that the calculation will not suffer something else will pick it up and carry forward. I, That's I, very different. I can imagine that they're even simulating those CPUs using this. Yes, exactly. Before they make any silicon. That is, they well, they're, they're even thinking beyond silicon. Yeah. Well, so we don't know what, whatever, but they are. they make a physical processor, they yeah. a simulated processor. So uh, IBM's got uh, another <coughs> technology, so uh, I'll give you all the slides. They're looking at how to, again, organize the memory different. And then Intel, uh, they have uh, people looking at all sorts of things out here, a whole different way of uh, doing things. They were given $20 million, and they also have to deliver in December. <laughs> then the other part is the right forward, where they want to accelerate even the technologies that they've come up with. And uh, there are a few people out here uh, that were different than the previous one. And these are some of their uh, things. They were given a small amount of money that uh, just started last year. And in 2017, we're going to see those results. So that was uh, AMD. This is Cray. And then IBM. They actually said, how can we stack these all together in a data center? So they're looking at external things, cooling. And then Intel, they actually are putting together tools to do simulation of all these components. Yeah. And then finally, I mean, again, these are a lot of hardware efforts, but they have software people sitting with them doing all of these. In fact, many of these names, they're actually software people and the hardware designer. So as you can see, they mandated, no, you guys sit together figure it out. And then finally, if you want to do some further reading, there's actually a website, exascale.org. And they, they're talking about when these systems become available, how do we organize our applications so that they can take advantage. So that's what the future is going to look like. And not too far. We don't have to wait 10 years, probably yeah. five, yeah. five to seven years. Wow. And I'm sure enough young people in the crowd, they'll be around to see it. So uh, with that, uh, I am concluded. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.